Good morning, folks. If you think it's difficult to land on a comet, imagine it looks like this. We've known for a while that the ESA planned to land a probe on 67 PCG, but it was not until yesterday that the news broke. This comet is a contact binary. You can see the spin of the object just as though it was a two-object system, but a small bridge connecting the two pieces shows that it is indeed just one. It's not like these objects are uncommon. It's just that it somewhat complicates the approach, the orbit, and the landing. We already thought that there might be some unprecedented electrical interactions and other complications as the spacecraft neared the comet, but this changes the game even further. Contact comes early next month, August 6th, and the spacecraft is now less than 10,000 kilometers away. They'll need some luck. I'd also like to quickly mention the giant hole that opened up in Siberia. Unbelievably, or perhaps believably, they are blaming global warming. It's all our fault. I've got some beachfront property in Kansas to sell you if you believe that. Top earthquake zone yesterday was Alaska. It took a 6.0 near the southern coastline and some moderate tremors to the north. I'll also point out that there are three buoys in event mode and none living in reality, showing unusual swings or cutouts that, while are unlikely to represent actual water movement, may indicate seafloor activity and buoy disruption. The storm watch now becomes a storm alert. One typhoon will strike land with tremendous force today. We're going to see an amazing storm surge, high winds, flooding, and significant risk to life for anyone in the way. We also have a tropical storm to the east, building strength now, and while the experts have the system shifting north a bit, which would be great news, the satellite images seem to suggest it's heading right for the Philippines. Let's hope for that northern shift. Hawaii? Tropic watch begins for you as well today. That East Pacific low weakened and shifted into the central waters only to regain strength, become a target for our measurement missions, and is now slated to head right at the island state. Hopefully it'll weaken, but even so could be a significant storm. I the power low between Australia and New Zealand. Also the hitch to the airflow in Northwest Australia. That's where we see the weather. Maybe another day or so for the worst of it to the east couple cells here, but I imagine the top system to watch is still off the North Atlantic, cresting now from Spain up to the UK. Bit of a lighter day in the United States and Canada, but not without watches, down south and with the northern flow there. In the south, the precipitable water overlay suggests that major flood warnings should be issued for this area. NOAA agrees, and the heat flow to the north will carry thunderstorms and rain well north of the border tonight. We'll kick off space weather with a destabilized filament. It was just the small one up north and it didn't produce a significant CME, but it sure is fun to watch them pop. For a few days now, the fluctuations in the cosmic rays seem higher than normal. Not that it is ultra high on all readers, although it is on some, but it's back and forth in general. According to spaceweather.com, the sunspot number indeed bottomed out. The fall. We actually had two groups begin to develop during the day, but they are both tiny, not any kind of flare factor, and for all intents and purposes, our star is asleep. The solar wind spent the last 24 hours declining in speed, temperature, and density. Not surprisingly, we have complete geomagnetic calm. Some low energy proton spikes occurred, but those are likely only relevant for the Uyen system. The coronal field showed the incoming and earth facing openings. Coronal hole incoming is now shown on the left side of the chart, transequatorial and with moderate force. It's kind of surprising we can't see the northern opening just as well, given its extreme power. Mobile Observatory Project is in Uxbridge for two days. Meet and greets and some good eats coming at the Rib Fest about an hour outside of Toronto. Come see us. Shots of our silent star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.